Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at Linux Mint 20. This is the latest version of my favourite Linux distro, and Linux Mint is also a good choice if you're a Windows user who's thinking of migrating to Linux. So let's go and take a closer look. Right. Here we are on the Linux Mint website, where we can see that Linux Mint 20 has just been released under the codename Ulyana. This is an LTS or long-term support version of the operating system, which will receive security and other updates until April 2025. If you're currently running Linux Mint 18 or 19, it's worth noting that these remain supported until April 2021 and April 2023, so there's no urgency to update. And personally, I always wait for a few months before upgrading a critical system. At the top of the page, we have the opportunity to donate to those who create this free and open source Linux distro. But for now, we'll go to a download where we can find links for the three different versions of a Linux Mint 20. All of these are 64-bit only and realistically require a computer with at least two gigabytes of RAM and 20 gigabytes of drive space. If you're wondering why we have a three download links, it's because Linux Mint is available with three different desktop interfaces. The most popular is Cinnamon, which is the one we'll mainly be focusing on in this video, although we'll also take a look at a Mate and a XFCE. But uh, for now, I'll click on a Cinnamon, and then I'll find a, a mirror close to where I am. Where are we down here somewhere? There we are, United Kingdom. I'll go for University of Kent Mirror Service and uh, download the file. When this is completed, the ISO we've obtained needs to be written to a bootable USB drive using a program such as Etcher. I've covered the installation of Linux Mint, including dual boot, in two previous videos, and so here I'll provide links and install instructions in the video description and not repeat that tutorial. But in short, Etcher will create a USB drive that we can use to boot a PC into Linux Mint running from that drive. This then allows us to test out the operating system, and if we want, we can click on the install icon. As we work through the resultant wizard, various installation options are provided, as I've covered in my other videos. And here, I'm just going to do a single clean install, and then after the process has completed, there we are, we can reboot our computer. Right, here we are booting into Linux Mint 20, which has a new circular startup animation. And with the startup complete, I need to enter my password. And we'll arrive on the desktop. And what we can see straight away is that a Linux Mint 20 is a constrained, a conservative upgrade, and definitely not the kind of operating system transition that occurred between, for example, Windows 7 and Windows 8, which gave people such a nasty shock. On first boot, as you can see, we get this uh, welcome screen, although I should point out this is actually my second boot, as I've been in already to adjust scaling for video recording. But uh, I've left the welcome screen here because it is uh, rather useful. In particular, if we get down to uh, first steps here, the first thing we can see is a means of setting the newer themes available in Linux Mint, changing the system colours, which traditionally are based on a green for the folders and the menu highlight, things like that. But we could make it, for example, a red if we wanted to. Oh, that's a bit different, isn't it? And we could turn on this new dark mode if we wanted to as well. I think for now I'll go back, though, to the, the standard settings. Below, we can also choose if we want a modern or a traditional panel. I think I'll stick with the modern panel, equivalent of the, the taskbar in Windows. And then next, we can go to a system snapshot. And if we launch that, it allows us to set up the system a bit like restore points in Windows, so that uh, if you have a problem with your system, you can roll back to a previous position. We've then got a driver manager to check for uh, any additional drivers needed for your computer. This shouldn't be needed because the Linux kernel should pick up everything on your system, but if we launch this, it'll just run through. We'll have to give it our password, and it'll have a check, see if any additional drivers are required, which uh, here they aren't. We've got all the drivers we need for this system. And in terms of such matters, it is worth pointing out that Linux Mint 20 has got improved support for NVIDIA Optimus. 
So, we go back to the uh, welcome screen here. You can see we can also run the uh, update manager to control system updates. I won't do that for now. You can see the system needs some updates. There's a little uh, dot block down there saying we've got some updates required, but that'll take a while. I'll run that a bit later. And then also here we can run, if we wish, the uh, software manager to install new software, and we could uh, set up the firewall. The final thing we've got here is system settings. I haven't missed it, honestly. Uh, I like system settings in Linux Mint. It's one of the reasons I really like Linux Mint. All the settings are brought together in one place. The appearance settings, the uh, user preferences, but also down here, the uh, hardware settings and uh, the administration settings. And if we click, for example, on display here, one of the nice things in the Linux Mint 20 is that we can finally, in this screen, set the refresh rate for the display. We can also set scaling for the user interface. We could do this previously, but now in this screen, we could also set fractional scaling if we're using a high DPI, which is very nice indeed. But in addition to that, we've still got, if we go back here to uh, the top again and to uh, appearance and font selection, we can still set the individual fonts for different font elements as I've done here, and we can set a text scaling factor. And this high level of user control of the interface is one of the reasons I really like Linux Mint, and it's my favorite Linux distro. If we just have a quick look at the uh, menu down here, you'll see there's lots of applications uh, pre-installed, as you would expect, accessories, various graphical programs, internet things, Firefox, uh, Thunderbird, LibreOffice, as you would expect, sound and video, we've got Rhythmbox for playing music, Celluloid for playing a movie, it's not come across that before, very exciting, all sorts of admin settings, preferences, as you would expect. And if we go into the software manager over there, we could install software nice and easily in just a couple of clicks. Uh, here we are, some editor's picks showing up. If we wanted to install, say, uh, GIMP, we could just uh, click on GIMP, click on install. It would ask us for our password, I'm sure. There we are, and if we just put that in, it will get on and install the package. This said, I'll be saying a bit more about how Linux Mint installs new applications later in the video. But uh, for now, let's launch a GIMP as it's now uh, installed, get rid of that. Hopefully GIMP will come up. There it is. And we're now running the, uh, the GIMP photo editor in Linux Mint 20. Greetings. Here I am back again, and I'm now running the update manager to get everything up to date. And uh, there we are, I think everything is up to date. Yes, our system is up to date. I can close that down, and the little uh, dot has disappeared from the shield down here. And I've also, as you can see, switched to the green version of this uh, new Linux Mint desktop wallpaper. And in fact, I'm now running Linux Mint 20, not just on this desktop computer, but also here on my laptop, where I've run it up from the USB drive we created earlier. And I've done this to show you this, which is a tool called Warpinator that's now included in Linux Mint. And what a Warpinator does, and yes, it's a fantastic name, it we implement a tool called Giver, which allows the easy sharing of files across a local network for computers running a Linux Mint. Now, uh, as you can see at the moment, I've run up Warpinator here and it says no other computers found. So if we just go back to our green desktop version of Linux Mint and go to the menu and accessories, and uh, run up Warpinator, which is right at the bottom. There it is, doubt that. And here it is running up, initializing. Very exciting to be initializing something called Warpinator, isn't it? And uh, hopefully, in a second, it'll find, yes, it's found the uh, other computer, the laptop, which is running from a live USB drive. So it's a Mint and Mint. And if we just uh, click on that, there we are, we can see we get the screen there. And we can send files by clicking on Send Files. There's some files we've been playing with earlier. But let's browse to find a file. Let's go to, say, Pictures. Oh, yes, Hamster with Nuts will do, won't it? Let's do Hamster with Nuts. And it's now come up saying uh, Waiting for Approval. So if we go back to a Linux Mint on the laptop, you can see we've now got a message saying New Incoming Files We Wish to Accept. It's also picked up the other computer. So we'll click on Accept. And uh, there we are, the file has come across, nice and straightforward. And uh, all we need to do now is to click, if we wish, on the folder icon there, and we can see the file in the folder it's in. There's the picture, we open it up. Oh look, we've got a picture of a hamster with some nuts from my Raspberry Pi hamster feeder video. And uh, basically, that's how Warpinator works. It's a very straightforward utility to use. And uh, I should just show you the uh, menu here, where here it is, and look at preferences. And in preferences, you can see by default, files come into a folder called 
Warpinator. We can start the thing automatically if we wish, and we can select whether we want approvals when the files are transferred across. But uh, really, as someone used to say on the television, that's all there is to it. Warpinator is a great included utility for transferring files between two computers running Linux Mint. Right, here we are back again in the Cinnamon edition of Linux Mint 20, which uh, as we've seen has got a menu that looks uh, like this. And if we go into its display settings, which are over uh, there, you might recall it's got this uh, fractional scaling available. This said, as you might also recall, there are two other editions of a Linux Mint 20 available with a Mate or XFCE desktop. And so I thought we should take a quick look at those as well. First, here we are running the Mate edition of a Linux Mint 20. And yes, it is pronounced Mate and not Mate, as it's named in Spanish after a South American drink. In contrast to Cinnamon, Mate has fewer features. It doesn't, for example, here in Monta Preferences, have a, the fractional scaling we saw in Cinnamon. But uh, on the positive side, the Mate version of Linux Mint 20 is more stable than Cinnamon and uses fewer resources. And this means that Mate runs faster, especially on less powerful hardware. If we open up the menu, you'll see it's uh, quite distinctly different to what we see in the Cinnamon edition of a Linux Mint. And I have to say that personally, I do prefer the Cinnamon layout. If you want the least resource hungry and the most stable version of Linux Mint 20, then you should opt for the XFCE edition. XFCE is a lightweight desktop environment. And here I've installed Linux Mint 20 XFCE on my old Acer Aspire 1 netbook. This has a 1 GHz AMD C60 dual core GPU, and even on this hardware, Linux Mint 20 XFCE runs pretty well. As you might expect, in this lightest weight edition of Linux Mint 20, we have fewer features than in Cinnamon or Mate. For example, if we look again in display settings, we once again haven't got the fractional scaling. And if you're wondering, I'm running here in a 1280 by 720 because my Acer Aspire 1 doesn't have a full HD display. If we look at the menu, you'll see that uh, once again, it's different to what we saw in Cinnamon or in Mate. And uh, once again, I prefer the uh, Cinnamon menu. But uh, this said, it's great. You can use uh, the XFCE edition on hardware, such as this Acer Aspire one, which would struggle to run the Cinnamon interface. Now, as you may know, Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, with Linux Mint 20 specifically based on Ubuntu 20.04. This is important because Ubuntu 20.04 uses a technology called Snap as its default method for installing applications. Snap was created by Ubuntu's developers, Canonical, and whilst in theory it offers improvements over the widely used APT or Advanced Packaging tool, many Linux users object to it. And the reason I'm telling you all this is whilst Linux Mint 20 is based on Ubuntu 20.04, it does not include Snap. The practical implication is that here in Linux Mint 20, it's far more difficult to install the Chromium browser. This is because in Ubuntu 20.04, Chromium runs in the background as an empty application that facilitates the installation of Snap packages, and it does this in a manner that makes it a requirement to have Snap if you wish to use Chromium. And whilst this doesn't happen here in a Linux Mint 20, the Chromium browser remains an empty or dummy package, which we can see if we look in the, the software manager. There it is, Chromium browser, empty package. If I click on that, you will see that there it is. Chromium browser is no longer available as a package in the repository, etc. It's explained here. And if you're thinking, well, I can't install Chromium this way, but I can install it via a terminal, typing at sudo apt install Chromium browser won't work either. Now, Personally, I'm not too worried by all of this, but if you do rely on the Chromium browser, you will need to investigate how you're going to run it in Linux Mint 20. Now, my own solution is to use the Chrome browser, which is Google's version of the open source Chromium with Google technology added with Google proprietary features. And as a professional YouTuber and a G Suite customer, I've no issues using Google's software. 
And so if you want to install Chrome, which is my solution, go to a google.com forward slash Chrome, click on a download Chrome. It'll give you the right to option straight away, accept and install. Uh, there we are, that stuff goes through and okay on that. And uh, there we are with a download complete, we can just click on the install package. And uh, there we are, but if I look down here now under uh, internet, yes, we've got a Google Chrome installed on this system. Anyway, all of this has been getting rather involved, so I think it's now high time to bring this video to a close. Since the end of support for Windows 7, I've personally been using Linux Mint for a lot of my everyday computing activities. It's the operating system I first boot up every morning. And using Linux Mint in that way for a good sort of six months or so now has been a very pleasant, a very, very nice experience. It's a very calming operating system to use, Linux Mint. And I'm therefore very pleased that we've now got release of a Linux Mint 20, and I'm sure in time I'll be migrating to this latest version. But now that's it for another video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, press that title like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.